Hey everyone, it's Nabil Qureshi and David Wood doing our unofficial Seeking Allah, Finding Jesus video series. Um, again, a lot of what we're going to cover uh, comes implicitly or explicitly from this book. Um, and there's much more in here that you can learn uh, if you want to get to the nuts and bolts. And so um, we're sharing this video series to, uh, in order for you to understand if you are a Muslim, um, some of the reasons why someone would go from devout belief in Islam, the truth of Islam, because of you know, hard logical facts, scientific evidence, mathematical evidence, um, reason, history, philosophy, etc. That was me uh, in 2001, going from that position to taking a look at the evidence and ultimately saying, wait a minute, even though I love Islam, even though everyone I love loves Islam, uh, it's just simply not true. And then having to uh, consider the alternative, which in this case is Christianity, and that the evidence for Christianity was in fact much stronger, not only than Islam, but every other worldview, which ultimately led me to accept it. Uh, if you are interested in learning about that, um, this video series is for you. If you're interested in reaching out to Muslims, this video series is for you. Um, and particularly if you fall into that latter group, this video. Uh, will be important because this video is helping you understand different approaches to ministry. So I have one friend, for example, in California, sweet lady, uh, blonde haired, blue eyed, about five foot two, five foot three, something like that. Um, and her approach is to find, um, you know, a Muslim in in her vicinity, and, and you don't have to look far to find one. Um, and to go to them and actually care about them and invest in them and say, where are you from? Can I help you with anything? Let me know if you need anything. Here's my number. And she actually befriends them. And for, for many years, she'll spend time with them. And, and the, the matter of faith will come up. Is that the best approach? Or uh, I have another friend uh, named Jay Smith who gets on a ladder in the middle of a public park and in a very booming, resonant voice, gives all the reasons why Islam is false and Christianity is true. Is that the best approach? Um, you, you've got my approach, which is to share my story and evidence on, on, on Islam side and Christianity side. And after presenting a fair case to say, here's why I think Christianity is true. Is that the best approach? And you got David Wood, who makes a variety of videos on, on YouTube of a variety of sorts, political commentary, current events. Uh, historical commentary on Islam and Christianity. Is that the best approach, David? What do you have to say? Um, yeah, and, and the, the reason this is this is important because I mean, our tendency, if we're talking about you know uh, introduction to uh, reaching Islam and reaching Muslims and so on, is to is to jump right into the facts. Here's here's how you respond to Muslim objections. Here's how you respond to Muslim arguments and so on. Uh, there is some groundwork to to be laid in in terms of. Uh, methodology and, and different approaches people might take because over and over again I've heard that that I have the, the wrong approach and that I need to adopt this other person's approach um, and you know at that point I have to ask well why, why have so many Muslims left Islam after encountering my approach in fact one of the funniest probably my, my favorite story of, of all time is uh, a guy who was online and said David you're, you're, you're too aggressive with Muslims <laughs> And uh, I said, well, you know, what do you mean? He says, well, you need to be more like Jesus. And I said, what? I need to be more like, you know, woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. I need to be more like that because I, I, I can't be that mean. And he says, uh, well, he's the Lord. He can, he can be like that. Uh, you need to be more like um, the apostles. And I said, what? You mean like the apostle Paul who, you know, said to Elymas, the, the sorcerer, you, uh, you son of the devil, you enemy of, of all righteousness. I need to be more like that because I can't, I can't talk to Muslims like that, man. I can't be mean like, like the apostles there. And he said, well, it's just a fact that if you shared the same information, but did so in a, in a very nice manner, in a much nicer manner, uh, Muslims would listen to you more. And I said, I, I kind of have found the opposite with lots of Muslims that they actually respond more if you're if you if you're, you're you come right at them with the with the material. There are Muslims who respond who respond to that approach better. Those are the guys I'm trying to reach. And at the end of all this, we went back and forth, and he said, Look, there's a book you need to read. It's called Seeking Allah, Finding Jesus, and it's about a Muslim named Nabil who had a, a who had a Christian friend who stuck with him for years. You need to read about that Christian so you could be more like him. And I, <laughs> I responded, I go, 
are, are you joking here? Because I thought he might be joking. He was just messing with me, right? Uh, like saying I've changed over time or something like this. So I said, are, are you joking? You, you know that's me, right? That's me in the book. <laughs> Uh, that I'm his friend from the book. And he responds, he goes, oh, no, I didn't know that. And I said, yeah, that's me. And so I explained things to him and he goes, wow, now I feel like I just explained the Kalam cosmological argument to William Lane Craig. So uh, I, I, th I thought that, that, that was funny. Uh, but, but the idea here is he's looking at that, thinking I'm being aggressive when, I mean, was I aggressive when we were having our discussions? Yeah, you were, but it was a welcome aggression. Like I was tired of, of Christians who didn't have answers or didn't have a backbone. You know, I, my, my view was that Islam was the truth. And if you think that I need to, be, to accept the gospel to be saved, something that I thought was ridiculous, uh, then you better come with reasons. Uh, I have reasons why Islam's true. Uh, let me share those with you. And if you don't share with me your reasons for Christianity, I have no reason to, 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 to listen to your message. You can talk about love all day long. I, I don't care. I, I don't care about love. I care about truth. Uh, and that's not to say that, you know, I was an unloving person. I think it's the exact opposite. I think my parents were loving towards me. My grandparents were loving towards me. I didn't feel a lack of love in my life. And so if someone just came up to me and said, love, 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 I'd say, great, not relevant. I want to know the truth. Did Jesus actually claim to be God? Because if he did, Islam's false and Christianity's potentially true. So I need, I think I needed that aggression. And, and, and it wasn't an angry aggression. Mm -hmm. Uh, it wasn't a, a, a kind of you know, negative aggression. It was, let's call it assertiveness. Um, it, was, it was an appropriate degree of assertiveness, which to a lot of Westerners can seem like anger and aggression. Because uh, it, it, it looks the same, right? I mean, if you hate Muslims and you say, Muhammad's a false prophet and so on, you could say that, out of, you could actually hate Muslims and, and say that. But at the same time, if you believe Muslims are wrong and you know that there are lots of Muslims who are more inclined to listen to you if you just say, this, this is why you're wrong and you have a kind of confidence and you're sure of what you believe, um, it can look the same to, to an outsider. And this goes back to the previous video I was what we just recorded, uh, the second video in the series is relationships. Like I don't, if, if I know David and, and he's my best friend, um, then when he says something like, and Muhammad's a false prophet, I'm going to receive that differently from some random stranger saying Muhammad is a false prophet. I know that he cares. I know that he, he's interested in the truth. <clears throat> I know that he's not just trying to anger me. Um, and so that's why relationships matter. Uh, if, you, if you listen to this kind of a conversation out of that context, you're gonna start asking that question. Hey, does this person actually care or is he just trying to incite and, and invoke anger? And so you have different audiences that you need to keep in mind. You have different approaches that you need to keep in mind. Some people would absolutely crumble if you came at them and said, Islam is false, Muhammad is a false prophet, the Quran has been changed over time. Uh, they, they, they wouldn't be able to handle that. Some people would get absolutely offended if you said that. And so for them, you use different approaches. But in, in my case, and in the case for a lot of now former Muslims that David has dialogued with online, they needed to hear, this is why Islam is false and this is why Christianity is true. And so the, with that said, going back to what we, what we mentioned earlier, that, that there is this tendency of, of people to say, hey, to look at something we're doing and saying, hey, you know, you should be doing the, taking this other approach. It has never crossed my mind to say, uh, no, you need to take my approach, right? Uh, the, the, the mentality is, here's how my church or my ministry does things. Uh, and we've been doing things this way for years and we've had success doing things this way. And therefore, that's what everyone else needs to do. That's never crossed my mind once. Uh, in fact, I would say for the vast majority of you out there, whatever you do, don't, don't do things the way I do. I do things the way I do because I believe something needs, someone needs to do this and someone needs to do the, some really sucky, <laughs> sucky work that is really, you feel, it, it, it hurts because you get so many death threats and so much abuse heaped on you that I wouldn't recommend it for most people. I would recommend it for, for, for certain people. Um, but, but the idea here is, Christians are a body, right? And there are different kinds of Christians. So the first, the first thing, if, you're, if we're talking about approaches, uh, the first thing I would say is think about what kind of, what kind of person you are. Um, if you have a, a, a sort of uh, you know, aggressive type of personality where you, you, you like to argue, uh, you like to be passionate, you like to present facts and so on, um, use that and, and try to find Muslims who, are, who, who share that, who, who share that 
uh, that that uh, that attitude that had those characteristics uh, because there are Muslims who they run into Christians who don't like to to have those kinds of discussions who don't want to have a passionate uh, discussion and they just oh these Christians are so weak it's because they don't even believe what they're what they're saying um, so if, if you have that kind of personality that's good if you have you can have all kinds of different personalities right uh, some of the most effective people um, that I know of in ministry are just so incredibly loving they're not they're, they're, they're not mean and aggressive they just love Muslims so much that no matter how much abuse gets heaped on them um, they just they, they they have such a heart for Muslims that they they keep pursuing them and so on. So it's there are different. And, and by kind of, the way, you do get you do get a lot of abuse heaped on you if if you're if from you're all in, sides. If you're from, in this ministry, from, yeah. from Muslims, from Christians who say you're you're doing things wrong, um, from the secular side of why are you guys taking this stuff so seriously and causing all this division. It's 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 nonstop. It's from in front of you, from behind you, coming from the sides. Everyone's everyone's uh, coming at you, and so that's why I say that you that you you should have a certain personality. You have to have a personality type to be able to take that if you're going to be in the situation where you're the sort of person who's going to get kind of attention that's going to lead people to to come at you like that. You have to have the the the, the right sort of personality. So it was one, just sit back and think, what kind of person are you? And I'm saying this because. I've tried things in the past that I just was not good at. And, you know, the, the, we want to try and do things that are outside of our comfort zone because those, those might be good things to do, but things that I tried and tried and tried and just was not good at. There, there were people who would take me out um, because I would be teaching. I would be teaching Christians, uh, you know, how to, how, to, uh, how to discuss things with Muslims. But as far as actually, if I don't know a Muslim, I, I could have discussions with him all day long when he was a Muslim because, of, because I knew him. Just walking up and talking to someone um, I'm awful. I'm the worst person in the world. I kept, I kept, I kept trying. I kept trying, and I was just awful at it. And so it got to the point where I'd be better off in my room making videos or something like that, or or um, having a debate, something like that. So I just was not good at that uh, be, because I'm just I'm just wired in a certain way to not be good at that sort of thing. You may be great at that. Some of the most effective Christian witnesses are people who are good at that sort of thing, who are good at having uh, having discussions and, and, and reaching Muslims that way. So these are things to keep in mind. One, what sort of person are you? What sort of things are you good at? And you, you, you know that that's that's your strength. And so you should you should be aware of that. Uh, so that's one sort of thing. And two, you would want to think about um, what are your goals in, in in terms of dealing with Islam? Because because of the situation with Islam in our world, you can have different kinds of goals with with regard to Islam. You can have different kinds of concerns. Uh, there are people who are most concerned about jihad or Sharia or you know the treatment of, of Christians under Islam or the treatment of Jews under Islam, and so their their concern is responding to Islam to show that it's false to sort of stop that to sort of stop the the, the spread of Islam and, and Sharia and, and hopefully uh, refute Islam as an ideology uh, for that purpose. So that might be the goal. That's something you would need to keep in mind. My, my goal is is this. I'm I'm counter jihad or counter Sharia or something like that. Something something to keep in mind. There are others who, who their main concern is you've got one of the biggest people groups on the planet, 1.6 billion people, uh, who there's not a tremendous emphasis on reaching them, and there aren't a lot of Christians who are well equipped to deal with their objections and to respond um, to their arguments. And so you might want to say, hey, I really need to. Uh, if that's my goal, then here are the things I need to do. And by the way, that's what we're doing right now. This, this is for you. This is for those people who want to reach Muslims as this, as this large people group. But uh, just one, just figuring out what your goal is. So figuring out what sort of person you are, uh, figuring out what your goal is. And the third thing, as far as, as, far as you are concerned, in, in the next video we'll talk about different kinds of, of Muslims. Um, but as far as what, what, what you're going to do, uh, figuring out how you want to do that. Do you want to do sort of street outreach, uh, walking up to Muslims on, on the street or on college campuses. If you're, if, if you're comfortable with that and you're, you're good at that sort of thing, you might want to take that approach. Um, if you want to have a longer term relationship, you actually want to, um, you know, you're, you're in college or something like that, you have a, a Muslim friend, you want to develop long term relationships. Um, that, that is a wonderful approach. That's what we talked about um, in the past video. Um, if, if you want to do debates, you want to become an apologist and deal with those kinds of objections. Um, you have those different kinds of things and then sort of uh, media that you might use. If you want to go YouTube, you know, you, you should have a, a, a personality um, that, that, that would, would be successful on Personalities YouTube. Personalities help on YouTube. Um, uh, 
you, you know, you be, be entertaining along with presenting information, those sorts of things help. Uh, or, you know, you could do things on, on Facebook or Twitter. So are you active on social media? Or do, you, or do you plan on being a speaker and going around speaking in various places? Do you plan on writing things, some putting out materials? Some people have a need for anonymity. So I have some friends who you know, have very vibrant, active ministries, but they can't release their name publicly. And so That's something to think about. They, yeah, they're writing articles under pseudonyms. Um, they're, they're publishing things uh, uh, in academic journals under pseudonyms. And, and that's something you could do, too. And so when, when, we, when, when you know, we're talking about, is, is, is Jay Smith's approach the correct approach? Guess what? Jay Smith was built for that, right? Jay Smith has this big, booming voice. He loves being in the center of a crowd of Muslims uh, uh, arguing with I mean, them. He was raised discussion. in India, right? Yeah. And so he, he, he learned the language. He was surrounded by these people um, growing up, and he has a heart for them, and that's why he's, he's reaching out to them. And, and, and they're, 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 uh, our friend from California, she, I can't think of anyone who's, who's, who's she's better. She's perfect for what that. she does. Yeah. I mean, she's um, got this, she just wants to embrace people and love people and walk with them. And so and, she does exactly that. And, and it, it doesn't, it doesn't, it, it puts me to shame, right? I mean, I, I sit down and I start working on my computer and preparing my next argument for a debate and stuff. And then she walks right off and then she's over there talking to Muslims. And I have to catch her like two hours later because she's, she's sitting down um, having discussions with Muslims, so um, figuring out, figuring I'll, out. I'll see her one month, so I, I'll see, for example, in, in 2012, uh, I saw her in June saying, hey, this is my Muslim friend, and then I saw her again in July, and she introduced me to the same person as, hey, this is a new convert. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's just like, wow, that's amazing, and that's her, she's built for that. Uh, Jay Smith is built for what uh, he's built for, David Wood, this incredible cynical wit and sarcasm mixed with truth and love. How do you do that? I have no idea, but that's exactly what his YouTube is. And no one can replicate what David's doing. God placed him there for a reason. I think, you know, if I had met our friend from California in college and she is the one that God had paired me with, I don't think I'd ever have become a Christian. I, I don't think so. I needed David. Um, and, and so God prepared him for his ministry. Um, my ministry, what is it? I've decided, and I'll, I'll be doing a series of, of videos explaining my philosophical approach to my ministry and, mm -hmm. and whatnot uh, after this unofficial Seeking All of Finding Jesus series. Uh, but my approach is what? Total transparency, um, ex explaining things through the lens of my love for my Muslim family. That's always what's playing in the background of my mind. Understanding why they see things the way they see things and yet explaining the truth of Christianity in light of that That's my method, but no one can replicate that because that's my story. So who has God made you to be? Do that minister through that and and don't spend your time criticizing other ministers They get enough criticism as it is. So you are you have a unique personality. You are uh, equipped for certain things um, now, if you are going to be effective in reaching Muslims, there's going to be things that you need to learn about both Islam and about Christianity. So that sort of applies to anyone who's going to be involved in this. But as far as the correct approach, uh, there is no particular correct approach. Now, again, it's great if you, we, we, we pointed out before, if you can get in a relationship with a Muslim, that, is, that would be our, our ideal approach. But as far as approaches to ministry going out there, um, uh, that, that, that depends on you and that also depends on Muslims because there are different kinds of Muslims which we'll be talking about in the next video. Yeah, I think that's a good place to, to cut it. So if you want to reach out to Muslims, consider who God has made you to be. Don't be daunted by this work. It's not, it's not about being a genius. It's not about being the most hospitable person in the world. It's about being humble in your heart uh, humble enough to say, I messed up, let me try again, having learned from the previous lesson. So you keep trying, um, in, in, and you, so humility and persistence, you keep trying um, after having learned what you learned, uh, and a willingness to learn. Um, so, you know, coming into this, David didn't know anything about Islam. Uh, in fact, I knew a little bit, I, know, I didn't know anything from the actual sources. He knew sources. virtually nothing. Uh, he, I knew a little bit. He, he wrote an <laughs> essay praising Muhammad. <laughs> well, yeah, I did. But I, I, I took a class on Islam and my and the books we read, it was it was this abridged Quran. It was only wonderful stuff in the Quran. Uh, everything about Muhammad is all written by by modern people. And it was, uh, Muhammad really sounded great. Yeah, if, if you take out all the bad stuff, Muhammad's great. 
<laughs> That's um, true about Hitler, though. <laughs> yeah, well, you don't want to do Muhammad Hitler comparisons. I, listen, get, I was just saying, giving you the people get angry extreme, about that. Yeah. He meant nothing by that. Uh, so, um, but if if. I mean, that's what he came with. Uh, he had this, you know, very um, slanted understanding of who Muhammad was. Uh, and then, over the course of years working together, he learned what he needed to learn, specifically that which I needed to hear. Um, and he went back and studied that and came back and brought that information to me, and I would counter it and we'd go back and forth. That will come. You don't have to be a scholar on Islam. If I suggest you know something coming into this, it's you know back and forth the reasons why you are a Christian, and let those be good reasons, not bad reasons. <laughs> so um, un understand why you're able to read scripture and trust it. Know the, the reason for the hope that you have within you. Um, you know, uh, understand what you believe about Jesus. Be able to explain. If you say you believe in the Trinity, be able to explain what the Trinity is. Otherwise, you don't actually believe it. You're just parroting what you're supposed to believe. Uh, so that's what I would say you should come ready with. Uh, an understanding of what you believe why you believe it. Beyond that, uh, have the humility, the perseverance, the willingness to learn, and, and God will take you from there. Okay, great. So we're going to do the next video now on understanding different Muslims and your approach to them. Thank you so much, guys. God bless you.